Hey, my name is Alicia Quinn, and today I'm going to be making an epoxy bracelet. Um, I decided to use Art & Glow because I had used Amazing Clear Cast for my charms and keychains. And when I used this Art & Glow, I realized I liked it a lot better. So um, it's one in one, one part epoxy, one part hardener. And as you can see here, I'm going to mix it in one cup because when I mixed it in two cups before, I didn't get all of one of the mixtures out of one cup and it didn't turn out right. So the epoxy ended up being kind of squishy. If you don't get your measurements exact, your epoxy is not gonna harden the right way. So make sure you get down to eye level and look at the markings on your cup. Like you have to be exactly right because if you're one ounce or one and a half ounces off, it's not going to turn out right. Um, things, things to keep on hand are plastic stir sticks, baby wipes. Those come in handy because it wipes the epoxy off really well when it's still wet. Um, Q-tips and rubbing alcohol. I like to dip the Q-tips and the rubbing alcohol, and that gets the epoxy off if you have overflow or anything else. A bunch of paper towels, wet paper towels. Um, so you're going to want to set your timer for three minutes and stir slowly. I'm kind of stirring fast, so I would stir slower than what you see here. The other thing you're going to need is a lighter or a cigarette lighter, one of those blowtorch lighters, which I have here. Um, but anything works that has a flame, really. So it's still cloudy, and that's how you know it's not mixed yet. So just keep mixing until you get a clear, a clear color, really, really clear. You can even set it to the side, and the bubbles will rise on their own. Um, and then just hit it with your lighter. But they will rise to the top. This is the Envirotex light I also used, and it wasn't my favorite. But um, I wanted to try it because I wanted to try all different kinds. So, so far the Art & Glow is my favorite. Uh, there's a ton of bubbles in there, so I kind of waited a while until they floated to the top. Your working time from the time you start mixing your epoxy until you it starts to harden is about 20 minutes. So you have to keep that in mind. If your house is 67 degrees or colder like mine is, you're going to have a little bit longer working time. If your house is warm or you're doing it outside, which you should be doing it outside because the chemicals are really bad for you. Um, it's going to go a lot quicker. So the warmer it is, the faster it's going to harden. So here I kind of just set it off to the side and waited for a minute for the bubbles to rise. The thing that I'm using is, um, it's not a full bracelet, it's half bracelet. And my daughter polished some rocks and she put it in the bracelet and wanted me to turn it into an epoxy bracelet. So um, this is the first time. Okay, so before I made this bracelet, I tried uh, to do a couple rings and it turned out really bad. I didn't have one of those uh, medicine droppers and I tried to pour it in and it did not work out so well. So a medicine dropper is the best thing to use. 
and I just took one from my um, my kids medicine cabinet uh, just make sure that you clean it right after you use it because it's going to be impossible to get out so either clean it out with rubbing alcohol or um, water but I would not suggest cleaning it out in your sink okay so I didn't get all the way to the top, which is okay because you can always sand the ends down. And that's kind of what I show you later when I demold it. But um, I also ran out of epoxy. So about halfway through putting it in, I ran out and I was using 20 milliliters. So I think I needed 40. So 40 milliliters was actually a little too much. So I decided to use the rest of the epoxy for these little charms that I had. Now I'm using powder pigment because I've used alcohol ink before and I've tried to change the color of the epoxy with alcohol ink and the consistency didn't turn out right and I think it has something to do with the liquid. So alcohol ink I'm pretty sure you use just for design um, because it says to put drops in your epoxy but don't mix it. Um, I also added really fine glitter to this mixture just to give it a little bit of sparkle. And then I ended up not having enough for both of the charms, so <laughs> there's a little indentation in the back of the charms, which is okay. They still turned out really well. And then I'm debolding it. So what you see here are, they look like bubbles, but it's actually glitter I put in the top of the bracelets. And it turned out pretty cute. My daughter loves it. Um, on that blue rock right there, you can see that it missed, it didn't cover up the blue rock completely. And I think that's because when you put the epoxy in the bracelet, you kind of want to bend the silicone mold so that the epoxy coats everything that's inside of the silicone. But I wanted, she, my daughter wanted them to look like they were floating. So if I had just moved the silicone a little bit more, um, that rock probably would have been covered. And then there's the charms. Those turned out real pretty, but like I said, you'll be able to see when I turn it around the indention because I didn't have enough epoxy to cover it all, but it doesn't look so bad. And then also on the bracelet, you can see the top of the bracelet down there. Um, it, there's an indentation on it. I did not fill up the silicone mold as far as I should have. So that's something else I'm gonna have to figure out. Probably get down eye level, because I, I know I didn't get down eye level when I put that epoxy in. But I think next time I'm gonna have to do that. If you take some um, sandpaper and get it wet and then sand your epoxy down, it's going to leave a rough, a rough mark on your epoxy. So if you have some um, epoxy glue or epoxy or resin glue that you use with a UV light, which I'm going to show you guys how to use later, you can easily cover up those rough marks with um, new epoxy, but anyway, I hope you liked this video. Um, I'm planning on making more. Thanks for watching.